Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Mustafa Nasser again, and you are watching Arabic Funans. This is the second lesson in Essential Reading Course. Today, we will be talking about consonants in Arabic, which we call as sukun or sukun. In the previous lesson, we talked about the three basic labels in Arabic, or what we call al-harakat, and they are equivalent to short vowels in English. And we said they are basic three, fatha, bamma, and kasra. Today, we will introduce consonant sounds, and we will talk about some important rules about consonants in Arabic. As always, don't forget to subscribe my channel and activate the bell to see videos on time. The objectives of today's lesson will be first, the concept of sukun or consonant in Arabic. We will introduce how to get the consonant uh, of any letter in Arabic. Second, we will talk about the three basic rules of Arabic consonants. And lastly, we will also give exercises to practice together the same way we did in the previous lesson. Now let's begin. In the previous lesson, I already mentioned that whenever you want to get the consonant sound of any Arabic letter, just add alif before this letter. Let's say I want to get the consonant sound of this letter. Okay. I will add only a or alif before it. Now read them together. S, S, S. So this is the consonant sound or the pure sound of this letter. Okay, is there any label through which we will understand this letter is consonant? Yes, there is. And this label is as simple as a small circle on top of the letter. Usually it's not big like that, but I made it big so that you can see it. So once you see a circle on top of any letter, it means this letter is consonant. And this label we used to call it sukun. There is another indication through which we can understand the letter is consonant. If you see the letter is empty, there is no any label on top or below the letter, it means this letter is consonant. So we will add a fourth label here, sukun, a circle, or if the letter is empty, zero, it means this letter is consonant. Okay, now I want to express three important rules about consonants in Arabic. Let me use the same example that I used in the previous lesson. This word, the dog. Let's put the label together. The first one, a, is labeled with fatha. The second one is labeled with sukun. The third one is also fatha. And this one is sukun. And the last one, we will leave it free because we don't know the label that it will get. It might be dhamma, it might be kasra, it might be fatha. Sometimes, or some beginners, as I explained in the previous lesson, they are just giving it dhamma by default. It's okay, but I prefer not to do so. Just leave it. Okay? The first rule about consonants in Arabic is that it's impossible to start a word with a consonant sound. I know this might happen in English, but in Arabic there is no way that a word can start with a consonant. So the first letter of any word must be a vowel, which means it must be labeled with one of the three labels, fatha, dhamma, or kasra. As we can see here, is labeled with fatha. But this one cannot be sukun. This is not happening in Arabic, okay? The second rule of consonants. Two consonant sounds cannot be next to each other in the same word. If I'm having a word that contains two consonant sounds, for example, these two consonant sounds cannot be adjacent. Like here, we have two consonant sounds. This one and this one. And as you can see, there is a vowel in between them. But something like that, Two consonant sound in series cannot happen in Arabic, okay? 
Okay, now the third rule about consonants in Arabic is that once we stop the reading, we always stop at consonant, regardless of the vowel this letter might have. So as long as we must start at the end of the word, it means we are talking about the last letter of this word. That's why I told you in the previous lesson to leave if you are talking about a single word, if I'm having a single word like this, leave the last letter empty, leave it free, because we do not know which label it will take. Now let me borrow this sentence from the previous lesson. This is a verbal sentence. Now I will label only the last letter of each word because this is what we are interested in right now. So this one, letter T, is labeled with Dhamma. This one, B, is labeled with Fatha. And this one, La, is labeled with another Fatha. Okay? So now let me read it all together. رأيتُ الكلب الجميل ال What's happening here? I pronounced this letter with sukoon. I said al jamil. But it's supposed to be fatha, it's supposed to be al jamil. But that's what I'm talking about. The third rule of consonants. Once you stop, you stop at sukoon, regardless of this label. So I will just act as if I'm not seeing this label al jamil. Okay? So what if I want to stop here? I will only read these two words. It will be رأيتُ الكلب Again, I made this one consonant. I read it with سكون instead of فتحة. Instead of say, instead of saying الكلب, I said الكلب. Okay. What if I only read this one? It will be رأيت I made it consonant again. So this is the concept I'm talking about. In the same way we are reading Quran, like Surah Al-Fatiha. Let me write the first verse of Surah Al-Fatiha. This is the first verse of Surah Al-Fatiha. Whenever we read it, we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So we make this one consonant. But if you check your Quran, you will see it labeled with Fatha. So why didn't we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen? Because we stop. And once you stop, you will make the letter you stop at consonant. But if you wish to continue reading to the next verse, this fatha will be obvious. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. I hope you get my point. One final point about consonants. Sometimes the final letter of any of some words is originally labeled with sukun is originally consonant in this case whether you stop at this letter or you continue the reading it will be consonant in both ways let me give you an example the interrogative noun men which means who the first one the first letter is labeled with fatha me and the second one is consonant, is originally consonant. That's why we label it with sukun. So let me give you an example. Men have a... So if I stop here, it will be consonant. Men, n, okay? If I continue the reading, men have a, again consonant because it's originally consonant. Now I think we have done with the first two objectives of today's lesson. Let's now take some words and break them down the same way we did in the previous lesson. The first word we have looks like this. Okay, let me give it the label. This one is labeled with Fatha. The second one is originally consonant, is labeled with Sukun. This one is a vowel, but again, I don't know which label it will take. It might be Dhamma, it might be Fatha, it might be Kasra. So I will leave it like this. Some beginners, again, they used to give it Dhamma by default. Ramlun. Okay. I advise you not to do that. Just leave it empty until you see it in a sentence. Okay. So now let's break it down the same way. Again, as a reminder, whenever you read any word, 
you need to spell two things for each letter the sound and the label now let's talk about the sound of this one it's equivalent to R sound in English right so I'll read R then we will look to the label Fatha Fatha means you will add a sound okay I will add it here the second one this one is equivalent to English M sound right again the label Sukun which means it's consonant no any sound so I will I will not add anything the third one again I will read it with Sukun because we're stopping here this one is equivalent to English L so let's read them together Ra M L Raml Raml Okay, one student may ask, okay, sir, please, you said two consonant sounds cannot meet adjacent, cannot be next to each other in one single word. But what we see here, two consonant, this one is consonant and this one is consonant. We already pronounce it as consonant. What's happening here? The answer is, this one is originally consonant, yes, but this one is not consonant, it's a vowel. It will take one of these three labels, but not here, whenever you put it in a sentence, right? What I'm talking about, two sounds or two letters can never be originally consonant and to be adjacent to each other. This is not happening. Like, if this one is consonant and this one is consonant, this is not happening, okay? The second example we have today is this word. Let me give it its labels. The first one. Labels with Kesra. The second one is consonant. The third one is also fat, is a Fatha. And this one is consonant, so I will leave it empty. So now let's break down the same way. The first one is equivalent to English M sound, right? This is the sound of the letter. Now let's move to the label. The label is Kesra, which means we will add E. Okay, the second one, this letter is equivalent to English F. Okay, it's labeled with Sukun, which means it's consonant. There is no any additional sound. The third one, this one is equivalent to T sound in English. And it's labeled with Fatha, which means A. The fourth one is A. And it's consonant because we don't see any label. As we said, whether you see circle or no any label, it means this letter is consonant. So this one is equivalent to A sound. And the last one is also consonant, temporary, not permanently or originally. This one is ha sound. There is no equivalent sound in English with this one, so I will, I will leave it like this. So now let's read it one by one. Me, f, f, te, e, e, ha. Because this one is consonant, we will pronounce it as ha. Mif, mif, te, mif, te, mif, te. Mif, te means key in English. Some people used to pronounce it with this letter labeled with dhamma, muftah. But this is the correct one. Miftah, miftah. Again, here we are having this one is consonant. This one also is consonant. It's originally, originally consonant. This one and this one are originally consonant. But this one is temporary consonant because we are stopping here. Okay, I hope now you get the point and you get what I'm talking about. Uh, as a summary of this lesson, we said that the best way to get the consonant sound of any Arabic letter is by adding alif before the sound. Second, we talk about three important rules about consonants. We said a word can never begin with a consonant, two consonant sounds cannot be adjacent to each other, and lastly, whenever we stop, we stop at consonant.
Don't forget to check the video description to download the PDF of this class. And also you are welcome to join our Facebook group. You will always see the link in the video description. See you soon.